Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Mastectomy. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be helping you with this procedure today. A mastectomy is a surgical procedure that is used to remove one or both of the breasts in the event that an individual developed breast cancer. If you're not familiar with the condition, breast cancer is a disease that originates in the inner lining of the breast's milk ducts. And with the exception of lung and colorectal cancers, it resulted in the most deaths of all cancers in the United States in 2010. Scientists and researchers aren't completely sure what causes breast cancer, but they do know that there are certain risk factors that put people at a higher threat of developing the disease than others. These risk factors include age, genetics, personal health history, and diet. Fortunately, there are a range of treatment options available for those diagnosed with breast cancer. These options include surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, hormonal treatments, and holistic medicine. Our patient today was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer following a 4 centimeter tumor, or lump, being discovered within her right breast. After being diagnosed with breast cancer, she and her doctor have determined that a mastectomy is the best option for treatment. Our patient is waiting for us in the operating room. So, if you're ready to get started, put on your gloves and I'll meet you there. To begin, we need to get an intravenous line started. This will provide our patient with essential fluids and medication during the surgery. A tourniquet has already been tied around her upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? Looks good to me. Sterilize the injection area using a sterile alcohol wipe. Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. The small burst of blood in the angiocatheter hub is what medical professionals refer to as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the patient's vein. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While placing a small amount of pressure over the vein to collapse it, remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angiocatheter when the needle is removed. Now that the needle has been removed, I'll dispose of it in a sharps container. Lastly, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the line. For those with a weak stomach or have children in the room, I need to let you know that the next few steps get a bit graphic and contain nudity. This procedure may not be appropriate for work or school environments. Click the Continue button when ready. Next, we'll use a chemical antiseptic known as chlorhexidine to cleanse the patient's skin. Use the applicator to apply the chlorhexidine to the surgical site. We're off to a great start. Keep it up. Today, we'll be giving our patient a general anesthetic using a face mask. Once the patient begins breathing in the anesthetic gas, her bloodstream will carry the gas to her brain, preventing her body's nerves from communicating with it. This will allow her to be completely asleep and free of pain during the surgery. Place the mask over the patient's nose and mouth. Once it's in position, I'll turn on the anesthetic gas. Now that our patient is unconscious, we'll insert an endotracheal tube into her mouth and down into the windpipe. This will help her breathe and provide a constant mixture of oxygen and anesthetic gases during surgery. Start by using the pen to sketch where we'll be making our incisions. Grab your scalpel and make the incisions in the patient's right breast. This will give us access to remove the tumor and breast tissue.
Remove the tumor and breast tissue using forceps. The electrocautery device will separate the tumor and tissue from the chest. Great! I'll send this to our pathology lab for examination. In the meantime, we need to insert a drainage tube. This will prevent excess fluid from building up on the chest wall. When you're finished, suture the wound. This was a flawless procedure thanks to you. Her chances of survival have greatly improved. After a mastectomy, most patients will need to stay in the hospital between one and seven days, depending on the complexity of the mastectomy, complications, and if any breast reconstruction is performed. While in the hospital, patients are taught various exercises that will help avoid arm and shoulder stiffness. These same exercises may also prevent the development of significant scar tissue. Patients are also provided detailed guidelines before leaving the hospital. They may include proper care of the surgical wound, post-surgical care while at home, and the treatment of future scarring. Remember, a mastectomy is a major surgical procedure, and recovering from one may be emotionally tough. Advice that physicians may offer patients to help recover emotionally may include Find someone that's had a mastectomy for emotional support. You may find that this person is more helpful than any book or video. Be optimistic. Researchers have found that optimism can not only improve the speed of your recovery, but your everyday health as well. Give therapy a chance. This includes participating in individual and group sessions to discuss your experience, challenges, and successes. Do what you love. Don't let a mastectomy keep you from doing the things you enjoyed doing before the surgery. And that's a mastectomy. If you found the surgery educational, share with a friend. And if you're up to it, check out another procedure on SurgerySquad.com.